right uh, so let's start with introductions then uh, i'll first of all introduce myself uh, i my name is rutvej rutvej joza and i've been working as a product manager for the past 5 years and overall i have around 7 years of experience most recently i'm working as a senior product manager with amazon maybe deberti you can also give a quick introduction of yourself uh, uh, hi uh, my name is deberti so i have been into product management from past one year as a product manager uh, i have transitioned to product manager from uh, analyst as i was working as an analyst and my most recent experience is with oyo and i have the i have been uh, working in oyo uh, as a product in uh, from past you can say 6 6 to 7 months okay great so the theme for today's uh, interview would be around product design and the way i want to drive this is that i'll give you a hypothetical situation about a product and post that we will mm -hmm. uh, look at how we can go about designing a solution for that particular problem so the situation yeah. uh, that we have here is uh, that you are a product manager for a banking and financial services company okay mm -hmm. and you are reporting to a head of products and he has recently mm -hmm. bought a new amazon alexa device and mm -hmm. he has become a big fan of its features so he mm -hmm. asks you to work on an idea of building alexa mm -hmm. skills for the services mm -hmm. offered by your company so the thing that we want to look at is how would you go about doing this uh, keep in mind that this is a banking and financial services company so all of mm -hmm. the uh, different features and services that they offer to their current customers mm -hmm. uh, the head of products want us to look at how you can provide the same services using alexa skills so what is expected uh, from you is to work on a product design strategy mm -hmm. which would include uh, understanding of the current uh, situation in terms of who is your customer uh, what are the different segments that you are catering to mm -hmm. uh, what is the pain point that you are trying to address mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then from there on you will go into the actual product design and feature prioritization and those things if you have any clarifying uh, questions then feel free to ask yeah so uh, i have certain questions so the banking and financial institutes what you have mentioned yes. are they uh, into like b2b or b2c when i say b2b is like they they deal with uh, organizations or they deal with single point customers like yeah. us so this is a b2c organization okay and uh, do they have any uh, social uh, like uh, any digital uh, yes. application yes, yes so, then it... so like most uh, banking companies today they have a presence across all social media platforms including facebook twitter linkedin uh, mm. and the likes okay and, and they have their uh, own website as well okay and they don't have their app they also have their app i they also okay. have a mobile app yeah okay so uh, now uh, coming to the uh, as a user since it is a b2c user uh, let me think from a user point of view sure. so uh, can i uh, i assume it is a bank which is icici bank okay. for example okay now uh, as a b2c user what i do i use icici credit card first thing second i do i can have a savings account there and third i have a insurance in that bank okay i not banking but as a part of their thing or banking or i have a like huge investment done in there I, as a ppf or mutual sure so uh, my pain points with from a user point of view are like two things uh, mainly revolves around the customer support so when i reach out it's very hard to reach out to the customer support for any problem like it has a multiple steps so i have to call and this is the first pain point or which i yep. feel uh, i yep. don't have the data to back sure. but this is something with from empathy empathy i am telling second thing uh, is sometime i miss the date because i have multiple credit cards so people like having multiple credit cards may have the due date missing so something 
which I get reminder on my phone mobile, but due to so many mo messages and email, I get it, it may get missed out. Yep. And uh, third is the uh, investment like insurance. That is also the pain point is I have to remember the due date. The same pain point I would say. Yep. So uh, these are the three pain points from a user point of view. I can think from a banking financial uh, services from a B2C point of view. Yep. I would like to uh, focus on the customer support part, uh, but if you want, I can uh, like, if you have any priority over uh, any other points I mentioned, uh, no. I can do it. So uh, now the customer support part is something which I would like to focus. Uh, it includes a much more manual task. A person sitting manually there to address your issues, and uh, also a person like me has to manually enter the IVR one, two, three, and then reach to the customer support. Now I have my supply is a Alexa device, who is like, he's my manager, is head of product, is super uh, in, in, like, in, impressed with this capability. Yep. Now, uh, assuming that at least some people will be using Alexa in their home, I would try to establish a, uh, we can say connection between Alexa and the registered phone number of my of the customer to, with the bank, so that within voice there should be a minimum step allowed, like minimum step uh, required to reach to the customer support. Okay. So when instead of using my phone and calling, I should be able to uh, say, "Hey Alexa, call the ICICI bank customer care." And Alexa should ask me one or two questions, like what what kind of query you are you want to address? Is it uh, present past? And third, you will say that okay, uh, I am connected. This is your wait time, and you will be soon here from there. And by in sitting here with the help of Alexa, I can speak the customer. Okay. Like, so, and this can also be recorded. Sure. So just uh, a few uh, follow up questions on that one. Yeah. So. Uh, before let's say uh, right now you are thinking about the solution part uh, right you started with the customers yeah. the pain points and now you are uh, discussing the solution aspect of yeah, it yeah. Uh, but there is one more aspect uh, before all of these is that if, just because your head of products is a fan of alexa do you really want to go ahead and build a solution for this or do you want to first look at whether it uh, makes sense to build this product at all or not and if you want to look at that, then what kind of data points would you try to capture in order to identify whether this is something that your engineering team should be investing time in building? Okay. Uh, so uh, I would see some data related to the customer support part where uh, I would say number of times a customer has tried to reach our customer support team via various methods uh, while calling through social media escalation, through writing emails, or through calling, and what is the success rate, like resolution time, how, and what was the customer response to the resolution given. As far as my experience with the customer support of banks, they never asked the feedback from us. Uh, regard. So far, I have not faced, uh, received something feed, like Flipkart, Amazon, they always ask for a feedback of their resolution whenever I, uh, place a customer escalation but they don't ask us so i don't really don't know if, if the customer is happy or uh, he is not that happy after the resolution provided in the banking and financial sector sure. and i would also like to say uh, see the time since it is a calling thing i am only fo focusing like i am improving not the email and social media i am not focusing on the callback part right now i am just trying to improve the number of steps a customer take to reach the customer support team. So I would just would like to see the waiting time of a particular average waiting time of a particular customer who uh, calls and then gets the customer. Also, sometimes what I have felt is that I have called the customer support time multiple times and it was waiting, waiting, and then the call suddenly got disconnected. Because of security issues, sometimes the uh, bank said that our customer executive will call back you, but they never call. Yeah. So these are the po points which I would like to see and then make a decision. And I believe that 
uh, it is a good customer experience not from a revenue point of view but since i don't have a customer feedback system right now uh, in banking and financial this will also help me to get a to give to get customer feedback in a more robust way that how my customer support team is what is helping my, sure my customer so, so uh, both way i would like to uh, explain yeah so so let's say that you look at uh, these uh, two or three metrics uh, yeah. in terms of number of times uh, the customer care requests yeah. are coming maybe you also categorize them by different types of requests yeah. uh, you look at the waiting time for customers for each of this request right yeah, yeah. now uh, based on this you realize that current customer support uh, services that we are giving to our customers are not up to the mark yeah. and we need to improve upon them right yeah, yeah. Uh, now would having alexa skills be the obvious solution or would you need to first verify something else before determining that does it make sense to go with alexa skills or something else uh so uh, alexa skill is not the primary one to do that to be very honest uh there are existing best customer support uh, experience available i told like flipkart amazon they uh not banking related but they are into e-commerce but their customer support is really fast and prompt so i can take inspiration from them like i don't think so they have escalated uh, integrated with alexa but they do have a chatbot kind of system where i can uh, automate some of the queries but again my here the calling system is something which is different because this is banking and it needs to be more secured than flipkart amazon because right, right. there it is not secure so i understand the complexity in banking financial that some things cannot be built and copy pasted from them because they must have certain security layers like if you call from any number in flipkart it gets picked up but in 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 case of bank it should not be because they need to have this uh, who is calling and for what so they need to have a verification thing so i cannot directly uh, connect to the customer support team without having some layer of security and for that i think alexa skills will help because alexa uh, can uh, it can be programmed in such a way that it uh, reads that the customer is not calling from a registered number which is registered with the bank or additional details is not matching this kind of things is something i think alexa skills are capable or if it is currently the alexa doesn't have that skill it the team or the alexa team is capable of making these changes if it were sure uh, so a quick uh, time out uh, it seems that your video is not visible uh, on the zoom meeting can you turn off and turn it on okay for me what happened shit my I think Rashmi has put it on the chat. Yeah, my my system has got uh, hanged. The Zoom. It's okay. telling it's not responding. Do you think if it works, uh, it's fine? I mean, uh, you guys can carry on. Uh, uh, okay. Sure. Yeah, if it works, it's fine. Yeah, yeah let me check. So fine, it's it got. It's okay. Yeah, we yeah. can continue. Am I am I visible now? no but i think that's fine if rashmi doesn't have a problem all right so uh, you just uh, talked about the security aspect of it right so yes. uh, can you dive a little deeper on that so in terms of security mm -hmm. uh, let's assume that alexa skills allows you to have full mm -hmm. capability of building whatever security layer that you want to build mm -hmm. what could be the possible solutions that you would think of uh, from a security perspective and i'm not talking about technical solutions but more from a feature standpoint what kind of uh, things you would implement in order to make sure that uh, things are secure especially since this is the financial sector we are talking about okay okay so uh, from a security point of view i would uh, so there are the first part and uh, imagining or assuming that alexa still currently have all this data like all this uh, data i would say like functionality or enhancement to support uh, i would like to have like some kind of things like uh, it, i should have a app 
so Alexa has an app in my phone, right? To right. Connect with that. So the app should be, uh, you can say, have this questionnaire or valid validation form where it should have the details of uh, my bank account, not bank account, but some details related to my bank. Okay. Say, for example, last four digits of my credit card, my uh, registered phone number. These are the two things and the registered email ID and three security questions. Okay. So these are the four things which I would like to provide my uh, Alexa app in case of while I am integrating my banking and financial system or my banking and financial data to the Amazon part, Amazon Alexa part. Right. Now, so, yeah, now uh, after that is done, uh, I am trying. So Alexa is such kind of a device where anyone can say, hey, Alexa, call the ICICI bank and it will take the call. Yep. Right. So I can do two things. First is that I can help the Alexa to recognize my voice as the only in this kind of a statement where I am right. telling I am telling that call my bank customer care. It should it should not randomly take anyone's voice, which is currently not. Uh, I think there is uh, Alexa takes anyone's voice and play music and something. But right. in this kind of sector, I would like to have this kind of feature where uh, voice matching should be uh, done. But I don't know how accurate the voice uh, matching thing is can be done. It yeah. cannot be 100%. So yeah. to add in another layer of security, I propose the app kind of uh, thing where the Alexa will ask me to give certain crucial details about me which I told like security questions and certain like this. Makes sense. And now, third thing is that uh, since it is a Alexa and I'm speaking it loud, it can be heard by anyone. So uh, if I am integrating my Alexa thing, so there should be like uh, after one time, after a time, uh, my security questions is changed. Since my bank details and phone number cannot be changed, so Alexa should not ask these details. The security questions should be repeatedly changed. So that uh, anyone, like any, uh, if anyone heard or ha hears also, he cannot get access. Okay. So let me quickly uh, try to uh, summarize. So the way you are uh, looking at security is that the Alexa app itself uh, would have information, uh, banking information uh, related to your security, ranging from your email address to your security mm -hmm. questions uh, yeah. uh, and, and your last four digits, right? Yeah. And then uh, an alternate solution that you proposed was voice recognition, right? Yeah, yeah. So if voice recognition, let's say, let's assume that voice recognition works perfectly, then in that case, you wouldn't uh, yeah. require the earlier uh, things that you proposed, right? But yeah. uh, one, one key thing to keep in mind here is that Amazon Alexa is a third party service as far as your right. bank is concerned, right? Yeah. And uh, most banks would not be comfortable with sharing customer secure information with third party services. Yes. So the way Alexa currently works is it does not store any data about uh, the actual app. So what it does is it just works as a layer. It takes in requests from the customer and it passes that request to the, uh, let's say in this case, if it's ICICI, then you as a customer will talk to Alexa. Alexa will take that request and directly pass it on to the ICICI bank app. And oh. then the app will give a response mm -hmm. and that will directly be passed uh, by Alexa back to you. So there okay. is no storage uh, that Alexa needs to do. It can be okay. managed through a uh, layered approach. Okay. 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 Uh, now going back to your earlier point about customer support, right? Yeah. So that was the first feature that you were targeting. Yes. Now uh, my question there is that you said, uh, the uh, feature or the skill that you would like Alexa to provide is that, uh, let's say you, uh, Devarati would go and talk to Alexa and say, Alexa, call ICICI bank, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and then Alexa would ask you, what is it that you want to call them regarding? Yeah. And that way uh, it will get information of what you want to call about and then directly the call will get connected to Ooh. the customer support. Yes, yes. But uh, would that solve uh, the primary pain points that you had talked about in terms of waiting time. So uh, right now, uh, 
uh, since you said that one of the major pain points is that people have to wait a lot uh, during calls. Even if Alexa places a call for you, you still might have to wait for a long time before the customer support answers your call, right? Yes, true. But there is one metric which, which I would see here is that uh, if you have ever called a banking customer support, it is not that easy to connect to a customer support. It takes you to n number of steps. Say right. IVR, you, you, you say press one credit card, then they will ask you for this one, for this two, for this three, for this four, and then last they will say that any digit. That also right. I'm not sure in that step they will say. They will say in some other, if I press one for credit card, then will, then they will say for billing one, for, for uh, deactivate two, for block three, like this. Sure. So I'm trying to avoid this step. So customer support waiting can happen, but that's then okay. that is the last step. So, so have, you're I trying have, to uh, look at the have, IVR part of it, doing yes. the IVR by having Alexa and do yes. the... I am just minim minimizing the manual effort of me trying to. I'm just telling that I, as a human, I say, I want to call the ICICI customer. The uh, Alexa asks for what reason. I say credit card bill, and then it directly connects. Sure. Uh, does it make sense then to also look at uh, so the way this customer support executives work today, right? Um, majority of the times they have a user manual, right? Uh, mm -hmm. A set of information that they can provide to the customers. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, if the issue is this, then this should be your response, right? And if the issue is this, then this should be your response. So they have a standard operating procedure already in place. Mm -hmm. Then would it make sense to look at this from a perspective where all of those standard responses get coded into Alexa skills. So we only have to call customer support if there is something which is truly exceptional, as in something that doesn't happen with a lot of customers and is probably the first time that something, some new issue has occurred. Mm -hmm. uh, only then you might have to call the customer support. All of the other cases you can encode within the Alexa skill itself. Yes, I agree with that, but people generally don't call customer support of, of banking for uh, like, as far as my, my issue is concerned, uh, there may be many users who will, for silly reason they will call, like for generation of screen also they will call the customer support, which can right. be easily done through IVR. Right. Right. So based on uh, input, so see, Alexa skill can be programmed like that as IVR. So right. if it is a standard, the standard solutions are already exist, which the IVR used to tell me once when I right. used to press three, say for example, if I say, uh, I want to uh, check, I want to generate my credit card pin. So Alexa will say the first three steps to me telling that oh, you can actually, you can go to there and do it. Do you still need help? If I say yes, then it gets connected to the customer. Okay. So there will be this automated because it's obviously Alexa. It's not that I will tell and it just call the customer. It will have a interface, but the manual input of the customer is something which I'm trying to, uh, and trying to, uh, you can say minimize. And also the pain of listening to the entire IVR to get my uh, correct solution is something which I am looking to uh, eliminate. Sure. So that's one use case, right? Now, yeah. let's uh, let's suppose that the customer support use case is what you targeted first. Mm -hmm. uh, it, would that, or do you think that that would be your minimum viable product or do you think that there will be multiple use cases that you will try to uh, look at in the first version of the product? Uh, if you ask me, my minimum viable product will focus only on eliminating the number of steps. Okay. Uh, by like use cases like uh, listening the entire IVR and selecting the correct one. This is the first use case I would try like to solve uh, with the help of Alexa. Okay. And as like, and I would like to see how my customers are. Uh, what so in this MVP there will be a scope of improvement also, which will be come, which will solve many of the use cases going right. forward. Like. Uh, Maybe sometimes like uh, just uh, calling the blocking the customer a credit card with and uh, uh, like ordering a new credit card, something like that, right. which will come forward. But MVP, I would like to focus on eliminating the idea. Okay. The customer 
and as my mbp gets accepted or if gets accepted based on the responses from the audience or from the customer i would uh, and also understanding how what is their preference or what is the shift do they still like to do the ivr thing or they are more inclined they really like the alexa one i would take further decision sure so uh, how would you roll out the mvp let's say that uh, the engineering team has developed it uh, and it's ready to go uh, mm -hmm. what set of would you roll out to the entire customer base of icici bank or would you focus on a particular set of segments and then what would be the key success metrics that you would like to capture in order to identify whether your mvp was uh, successful or whether there were things that did not go as planned okay i would definitely not uh, release it to the entire icici customer i would okay. uh, select a very uh, small sample size uh, of the user base now sampling size would have certain criteria i would like to target uh, a user base based on number of as customer uh, number of times they have tried to reach the customer support the frequency okay so uh, say for example uh, i got that from past 15 days uh, 25 customers have been trying to all 50 customers are trying to reach our customer support and their frequency is uh, twice a month okay. or thrice a week so i will try to uh, like launch this to this kind of set of users okay and uh, i would like to see the behavior so uh, i don't know if they will have a alexa or thing right so for that right. uh, i generally uh, prefer talking to the customer uh, directly okay at as giving like i would like to do a survey first before launching the mvp to them so exactly. to understand that if they have a uh, alexa in their home and they, do, do they like using it so based on the input i would launch the mvp so out of 50 say for example only 10 have alexa so this then is my uh, base for testing the mvp right so, so uh, just a quick one on that yeah. uh, uh, so would it then so you mentioned survey right in order yeah. to identify which uh, customers have an alexa. alexa device yeah yeah so would it make sense for you to do the survey even before uh, uh, you start uh, the engineering team starts developing the uh, skills because Uh, let's say you do the survey and the results comes that of the entire uh, customer base or the people who responded to your survey mm -hmm. only 1% or 2% actually had alexa devices with them uh, would that then change your decision of not going ahead with the mvp at all and uh, because it might not be business uh, justification might not be good enough yes it makes sense because uh my entire product is based on alexa and right. if my 1% customers are having alexa then something so big making for 1% customer doesn't make sense and what if uh, so would you just look at uh, in your survey would you just ask them whether they have an alexa device or not or would you also uh, i would ask like them to ask that, if yeah. they plan to buy or they are interested or they would how how like how they will react if i some if i give them something like that right so how what is your uh, inclination towards having a customer support on alexa where pain of ivr like demolishing ivr and introducing voice based uh, like ivr system where you don't have to manually or listen entire ivr just what i have told you yeah. the same thing i would like to convey to my service to get Makes that sense. their uh exceed they are, they may not have the alexa but they may be interested on that sure. but yes for mvp launch alexa is important so what if uh, during your survey mm -hmm. you realize that a lot of uh, your customers do not have alexa uh, would you just drop the plan or would you look at something else i would also add a question there that uh, what do you like to do alexa to improve your banking experience okay so i will gather those requirements from you guys makes sense but uh, if they don't have alexa then uh, there are other competitors of alexa out there yeah right? yeah so alexa so, is just i am just giving a mention in this uh, we can say interview right. but uh, it can be anything it can be i would say that uh, how do how do you like about uh, 
devices like Alexa, Google Home, and any other. Right. Whatever. Right. Exactly. So then your survey might also have to have a question regarding which voice recognition software yes. they use today, right? So if yes. majority of your customers are, let's say, using Siri or Google Home, Google. Yeah. then then you might want to switch your plan or maybe include multiple supports in your mm -hmm. first version, True. right? Correct. Correct. Makes sense. That that also is an important part to be added in the survey. Perfect. So uh, going back to uh, the MVP launch. So let's yeah. say now that uh, you initially did the survey, everything went well, mm -hmm. uh, you are ready for the launch. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, one of the things uh, in terms of data collection, right? Uh, mm -hmm. do, do you think there is another way of getting information of which customers have Alexa devices apart from a survey? So let's say that you sent out a survey, but most of the people who uh, you sent it to did not respond to your survey. Mm -hmm. Do you think there is another way of getting that data uh, for yourself? Uh, for myself, I would like to, yes, there is, but I don't know if the data is available. People, I have read, uh, I have been, uh, I have seen an article in Google that most people uh, tell Alexa to play music. Yep. And Alexa has, uh, sometimes they play music from Savan, sometimes they play music from Ghana. So if I can get that data from there, that how many of right. the users uh, play songs from Alexa to your devices, uh, like through your uh, application via Alexa, that would help. Actually. Sure. So, so you're saying one way could be that third, part, third party yeah. service providers yeah. can give you the list of email IDs who are interacting with Alexa, and then you can match them against your yeah. existing customer yes. base. Yes, I think. Uh, another thing, since ICICI is a credit card and debit card provider mm -hmm. as well, yeah. the majority of the customers might be using those cards for doing online shopping, especially customers mm -hmm. who are using uh, Alexa and similar devices. Mm -hmm. Would you get that information uh, from your credit card or debit card purchase? Uh, uh, in terms of which customers bought a particular device online? Yeah, but uh, they may not use my card to. Uh, yeah. I told you, right? They. Right. I don't. I don't know the offers. I can do one thing that uh, if ICICI had some offer running on like this kind of devices. Yeah. And how who, who like the people who have gone ahead and bought it? That is one thing I can do because uh, generally I cannot. Uh, determine that the same ICIC customer may have the Alexa device, but he may not have used ICIC bank credit card or debit card because there is no offer. Right. So, so I would it, like to look at the offer scenario. Makes sense. So in case you don't get data from the survey, then this could be your fallback. Yeah. Plan, yes. right? Yeah. Sure. And um, now going to the success metrics. So you were trying to talk about that, right? So yeah. what, what would be the key metrics that you would look at to identify whether your MVP was mm -hmm. a success or not? A first thing is like how many people shifted uh, from traditional IVR to Alexa calling. Okay. And then uh, the average wait time is very important. Like what is the average wait time they have taken to get their resolution? Uh, compared to the IVR uh, pressing one, two, three, and four, uh, the time difference, the delta would be a very so the IVR wait time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. like the IVR pressing and they are the delta plus their delta. This will be a very important metric to check. Yep. And uh, third is like uh, since I will also like to have a Alexa asking for a feedback of one to ten. Uh, yep. Which I assume, like I have seen that banking professional doesn't give me. Uh, right. I don't have that feedback counter. So this is a sure. clear, you can say, no, uh, you can say no comparison only because I'm getting a feedback there about yep. my customer resolution. So these three things is like key things which I will look. Great. That, that's uh, good. So uh, just uh, one follow up on that. So. Let's say that uh, you find out that out of the 10 people who were, uh, 10 is a random number obviously here, it could okay. be 10,000, yeah, but yeah. out of the 10,000 or 10 number of people who used your MVP, mm -hmm. uh, you found out that um, let's say 50% uh, or X percent of people uh, mm -hmm. used the Alexa calling rather than the IVR. 
okay mm-hmm. one time uh, let's okay. say mm-hmm. uh, and based on that you also found out how how much was the waiting time and the waiting time differences in line with your expectations correct so uh, would you then consider this as a successful mvp uh, uh actually it depends on the weightage of the metric actually so right. i would have a successful uh, definition so i targeted 10 right say for example and out of that only 1% have used it so i would not think that it is a successful because okay. i my definition of success would be minimum i would have a benchmark right say 5% or at least 7% or 6% any percent but definitely not 1% So okay. every metric will have a you can say legend which says that this person means good, and below that it's not and, acceptable. And on what basis uh, would you derive the benchmark? So how will you decide what should be the ideal benchmark for the success? Uh, it is generally what I do is that uh, it depends on the historical data. So uh, out of this ten people. right uh, when out of this 10 people uh, i would check the frequency they reach the customer care oh, via yes. the traditional ivr okay and uh, i would i don't know if i'm right or wrong but generally the ivr system will have have updation right release updates and something like that every yeah. there must be so whenever okay. there is a new update happens what is the you can say uh, and when it is being launched what is the average number of hits it gets okay so based on that i can derive a legend yep uh, but if uh, so my question was that uh, how would you look at uh, which percentage is a good enough percentage right so for example mm. uh, if only 5% of your users uh, of your mvp users used alexa mm. then how do you know whether that was a good number or not would uh, you would you Uh, look at uh, since in this case you don't have a historical data of people yes. using alexa within yes. your company yeah would you look at externally other uh, other apps who have uh, launched similar alexa skills what was their adoption rate would that be the way to go uh, that is a good way to go i would agree with you uh, that uh, when they have adopted alexa so say for example i told you the music play thing right Right. So after Alexa introduced that, how many people have stopped like playing music uh, manually, and then okay. they have they have continued to play music voice. So right. what is the adoption of that thing? With yep. that, I can compare. Makes sense. Now, uh, just one thing that you should keep in mind is that yeah. uh, the adoption rate might be different across different industries, yes. right? Yes. So yes. Uh, people might be using Alexa a lot in the music industry. but mm-hmm. might not be so much in the banking, banking. or financial industry correct correct so one, uh, maybe you need to look at whether other banking. players in this banking. industry have adopted this and mm-hmm. if th- yes then what was the adoption process? yes correct correct i agree but yeah. i assume that i am the only one doing that so okay. that that is why i told that music sure. so okay. i would make a assumption there Yeah. Uh, so if we, if if nobody else in that industry has launched it then your best bet would be to look at the closest industry that matches with uh, banking and finance okay okay makes sense makes sense um all right uh, i think uh, we are good with that now let's say that your mvp is uh, launched you looked at the success matrix uh, everything fell in place right mm-hmm. uh, and uh, you maybe you went through a few iterations but uh, finally you have your mvp right mm-hmm. now what is the logical next step to do or what uh, would you be doing so while the mvp is generating data right uh, and you are monitoring data but what would you be doing in the background to make sure that you are ready once the mvp uh, phase is over uh so i would uh, first thing is like i would uh, try to understand the capability of uh, this kind of alexa and things more right. and i would like to automate what i have not automated so far so for right. example i have I have only automated the customer support IVR thing. So right. now customer reaches to us through social media also, through email also. So yeah. in that direction, I would like to focus. Correct. So that the entire end-to-end customer support, be it phone, IVR, email, social media, 
how can i help how can i empower uh, the integration between my system and the uh, you can say this kind of devices where uh, to eliminate or to improve the replies or and i should get notified about my replies without what so that i can say my alexa that please i want to uh, please write down my customer query in twitter and yeah. i should say an alexa should write something like that i would like to have okay makes sense so uh, basically you are saying you will expand on the customer yeah. support use case uh, through uh, tapping into different channels for the correct. same use case yes correct uh, but uh, to to that so there are other features as well that a banking customer generally uses right so for example somebody wants to open a new account or somebody yes. wants to yes. Yes. look at what is yeah. the current balance somebody wants to say what is my due date uh, for my credit card bill right Correct. Correct. so uh, th there are a number of use cases that the banking industry has how mm. would you decide amongst all of these use cases which mm. one should be prioritized uh, first so if you have to let's say uh, build a road map of which use case would be launched at which stage mm -hmm. then how would you do the prioritization uh, across use cases so uh, again um, since the direction is like the people reaches customer support to uh, ask information about how to open a bank account and something like that yeah. it will be uh, the priority will be i would decide on the number of times or the number of customers have raised this question to our customer support right so based on this parameter i would give the more weightage and decide the use case that needs to be you can say developed next after the mdp okay so it is basically uh, in terms of what kind of customer impact would each yes. of this use cases make right yeah correct and, and that impact could be measured in number of ways it could be either how many customers reached out for that particular yes. thing in yeah. a month or it could be how much dollar value it will add to our business if we uh, automate that particular yes. use case right correct the cost cutting can be something right like, uh, i have a uh, so we need five customer executive head to do that if you automate it it will be close to one so that map yeah. can be exactly so uh, the impact and the reach is one aspect of it but let's say you come across a situation where there are two use cases mm -hmm. which have a very similar impact so both of them are giving us uh, let's say high impact now if you have to choose which of those two should be prioritized first mm -hmm. then uh, is there a third thing that you would look at uh, to determine which of these two can be prioritized or would you just take a gut call uh gut call no no but i will have a road i have a road map right right so if the road map things will have something related to both of the use cases but right. the road map definitely will have uh, weightage like the number of items say for example in my road yeah. app is more aligned to say use case 1 right and use case 2 also have road map but it is more in the you can say quarter 4 or quarter 5 something like that if i give quarter, this use case now there are only two to three items which can be done but it is which is which, which can be done but uh the right. number of items related to use one use case one is more so got it so basically what you are talking about is engineering effort right so yes. your team uh, would need to spend x amount of time to develop a particular use case uh, in alexa yes. skills Correct. and depending on how much effort your engineering team puts for both of this use case you would choose the one which has lower effort uh lower i lower effort plus like maximum impact which right which right so we uh, exactly so we established that both of them have the same impact correct now if if you have to choose between one of those two then you will look at the effort, effort. yeah so and also it it should be aligned with the road map so if now he is doing the effort here so yeah. in future the effort would be less for 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 delivering some of the uh, key features related to this is this one perfect i think uh, that's uh, that's pretty much uh, it the last aspect of it which uh, is uh, not uh, very important for this particular role but still i would like to hear your thoughts on 
yeah. is uh, the product marketing part of it so mm -hmm. uh, now that you have your mvp you have your roadmap mm -hmm. uh, you uh, once your product is getting launched uh, before that you will have to make sure so since you, one of your success metrics is adoption right yeah uh, how how are you going to drive that adoption is the adoption is very low uh, mm -hmm. uh, what are the various ways that you can look at to increase that adoption uh, so i would like to target uh, social media for campaigning on my okay. because it is a complete uh, you can say so i would like to uh, use ad ad networks i say it is a paid but right. Right. this is the only way i can reach to my customers sure. more like more efficiently uh, push notifications is something uh, people who are having icici mobile app they yeah. will have a notification telling that we have launched this sure. uh, thing but i would like to focus on social media channels where i have published the capability of alexa okay and since i am and also i would take help from amazon which is like push devices alexa yeah. so that they also uh, kind of market that now alexa is capable of doing this yep so there will be two way marketing sure so th these are like uh, some of the channels right so, yeah. so social media um, uh, direct app notifications then yes. uh, partnership marketing through Correct. amazon and yeah. then also obviously there are other ways uh, in terms of sending out emails or Email. maybe Correct. people Correct. who are visiting the branch can look uh -huh. at a poster Correct. or a banner right yes yes uh, these are offline like where? Correct. Yeah. so let's say that you are starting with the product marketing and uh, you invested um, in each of these channels uh, some amount of uh, was invested by your marketing team right mm -hmm. and uh, uh, since you wanted to go heavily on social media so extra amount was allocated to that now mm -hmm. would you uh, would you just launch that marketing plan and that's it or would you want to keep on monitoring it to see the yeah. results and if if yes then what kind of uh, metrics would you see and uh, based on that what changes might happen uh, so uh, marketing when uh, any campaign is launched say for social media uh, online marketing i do, i can have a track of adoption actually uh, yeah. offline where you see the poster and things i don't know the source i cannot say so if they have come from the posters like offline marketing where i have in the bank channel they have given Sure. and so i am targeting only on the online marketing okay. so i would like to monitor that how many active campaigns are going on and based on that how many people have actually uh, we can say uh, there will be a first conversion be, ratio yeah yeah conversion ratio right so the first conversion ratio will be like how many people have actually integrated their devices alexa to yep. the system which there will be a first step to sure. reach the customer support so or they they have at least clicked or like not they have successfully not done the integration but at least started right. the process sure so that is something which i would closely monitor and uh, also one thing like for the face ads and click to there for ad net marketing there is something like uh, click ctr like right how, how many times they have clicked yeah, and click then, ratio, yep. yeah and then they like the aim of the click is completed so these two things i would like to monitor first right. is like people who have clicked it at least and second would be like they have clicked and actually performed the activity for which the ad has been published all right uh, that's good so uh, maybe now we can just take uh, a few minutes uh, uh, five minutes maybe to uh, summarize the entire uh, discussion that we had starting from uh, how you would start with uh, as we discussed customer research right yeah. uh, and then followed by uh, the uh, use case that you would pick mm -hmm. and the mvp the security aspect of it and mm -hmm. the final uh, success criteria matrix and marketing yeah sure yeah. yeah. so to summarize i would say that uh, as there are certain assumptions so say for example uh, there's assumption is people are likely to have a automated you can say uh, kind of a customer support without ivr using home smart devices like alexa google home and things like that sure. so based on this input from the user uh, we i would like 
we will design a uh, less non ivr process to reach our customer support for any kind of uh, information uh, any kind of support they require and uh, that this mbp will have you can say uh, a launch parameter or a launch kind of a uh, restricted right, launch Yep. Where they we will launch only to the people who have the Alexa device to monitor. Right. Right. And when the launch is done, there will be a close monitoring of that metrics based yep. on the critical three four metrics like uh, average wait average wait time, the shift of people, and the speed yep. back to the resolution given. Sure. And uh, to benchmark the MVP successful or bad, we have to do some close kind of a competition analysis where some other player may have done or may not have done. Right. If not done, then the closest to my industry. And also uh, while launching the MVP, when the MVP when the MVP is launched, uh, we should think like there will be a provision to think the goal or the future roadmap of the MVP. In what direction I would like to help uh, yeah. our customers and also enhance the MVP to make it a full-fledged product. Yeah. Uh, the marketing scenario includes uh, targeting the audience in online and offline section. Uh, offline section is based on posters and uh, targeting the ICICI bank. Second would be like uh, in-app notification of ICICI bank, also in-app notification from Amazon imagining we are integrating with Alexa uh, as you mean so Amazon will be a, uh, helping us in marketing third will be SMS social media like Facebook Instagram ads and monitoring the ad click like conversion to yeah. different, uh, or, since for offline it is not possible to measure online we'll have a clear you can say there are uh, clear uh, distinguishing between like people who have clicked the ad at least once and people who have completed the process Sure. So based on that, decisions will be taken, like uh, further decisions regarding improvement of the campaign, or at least, or either improvement of the product. Both can be taken. Great. All right. I think uh, that's all that I had. Uh, maybe if you would like a quick uh, feedback, uh, then uh, I would say that I really like how you started off with uh, looking at what kind of customers we are trying to target, uh, especially identifying the B2B versus B2C uh, mm -hmm. use case. And then you started with uh, the customer, which is generally the right way to go in product management. You always uh, start with the customer pain points. So you mm -hmm. identified some good pain points and then decided to focus on one of the pain points. Mm -hmm. uh, some areas uh, that you could have improved on in that would be uh, that you could have talked about uh, so obviously you did not have the data right now but you could have at least uh, talked about how it could be data driven in terms of how what kind of data points you would collect in order to make a decision uh, yeah. but i think once once i drove you towards that point you picked it picked it up very well so that was yeah. also good uh, another uh, feedback that i had was that uh, majority of the times i noticed that you had uh, the right set of ideas but uh, the terminologies that you were using were not very uh, you know industry standards and for example yeah. when we are talking about prioritization uh, uh, mm -hmm. looking at the engineering effort you yeah. knew that you were talking about engineering effort but you did not use that term which yeah. could sometimes get tricky if your interviewer is not very attentive so yeah. uh, that might be something that you would like yeah. to yeah, yeah. But all in all, uh, great interview and that's all. Yeah. Thank you. I also enjoyed uh, the interview. And right. it was really nice interviewing uh, sure. with this use case. This is the first time I have been uh, given such design question with Alex or something. So okay. this is really nice. Glad you enjoyed it.